Hey, what's up? Leron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Finally painted a bit of a larger piece and I wanted to share the process with you. This is from a park really close to where we live. Um, one thing to pay close attention to is the foliage, which is something I know a lot of people struggle with, how to avoid it being overworked, how to get the right balance, how to get the details in, but still preserve a sense of movement and, and and motion and fluidity that characterizes watercolor. So we're gonna do all of that in this painting and put a lot of emphasis on it. So let's get to it. Okay, so drawing stage. Uh, I'm gonna show you everything, but there will as always be uh, time uh, timestamps in the description box so you can skip to whatever part you want. And also you can just scroll on the video and uh, if you wanna skip to the painting stage. I do think there are a couple of interesting things here and I have been asked about perspective, cars and so on. So what's beautiful about this kind of a scene and I'm going to try and talk high level rather than necessarily explain every single thing I'm doing. What's beautiful about it is that it's a nice combination between natural stuff like the foliage uh, and a lot of things that many people find challenging for a good reason and then also perspective and actually controlling 3D because of the cars and all of that. So you get kind of <laughs> two very challenging elements and I want to show you how I approach both. What I'm doing is starting by setting up the perspective lines which basically means where the lines that are parallel are coming out from and they're all coming out from this horizon line where I'm at right now uh, where I marked it uh, take into consideration there will be a minor skew in the angle due to the camera um, so it's not a mistake really it's just the camera angle uh, but in any case the first car is a little simpler you just have the top and bottom lines that are parallel and then the back that is kind of vertical uh, you get the roof there that's very sunlit, so it is important for me to show that. The bottom line where the tires are just follows the perspective. Uh, so it follows that same line of the street, the, the sidewalk where it is. Uh, these details I'm just kind of throwing in there and look at how free my hand is. What I drew is actually the uh, the line that is parallel to the main axis of the car. It's something I talk about in other videos, but uh, I wanted to figure out the right angle for the tire's ellipse because it's not going to be a perfectly uh, vertical ellipse. It's going to be at a slight angle. Okay. Now, the reason why I decided to paint this scene is look at the shadows. They're just beautiful. And I love that combination of the road being kind of a warm, yellowy color, as opposed to the shadows that are slightly cooler, but muted. Um, and that combination is something I always enjoy. It's one of the things I really like about uh, Alvaro Castaneda's work, for example. Uh, so I love capturing it whenever I can in my own work. Uh, so here I am putting the back of, of the car, top parts, parallel to the, those same lines coming out of that uh, horizon line on the right. Um, same angle for tires, per, per, perpendicular to that, and that is the long axis of the ellipse of the tires. Uh, again, this is something I talk about in other videos. If you search for perspective, ovals, and so on, you will find it. Um, and I will talk about it more specifically in future videos as well. Um, here's the back of the car. Going to be a pretty prominent part of this painting, this car in particular. And the reason why is that the car on the left kind of leads us into the scene. It's close to, it's it's um, basically tangential to the edge of the painting. But this car is the first closest one that we see fully. Okay. And what I'm drawing now is the second car that we see fully. Um, so these two are going to play a major role and especially the one on the left, slightly closer, larger to us. I'm going to play around with the color harmony, make it very interesting in my opinion. Uh, so that's going to be a fun part of the painting. So right now we're kind of <laughs> messing with the cars, uh, but the foliage will come soon and will also play an important role that you will uh, see. Now look at these shadows. I know they look a little diagonal in the, in the photo reference, but remember these are almost horizontal. Get them almost flat. That's how you convey that they're on the road. I know it's very easy and it's a very common mistake for people to make to diagonalize these lines. They're not diagonal, they're almost perfectly um, horizontal. The farther they are from us, the more horizontal they get. The closer they are, like if you look at that, that shadow cast by the car that's closest to us and then there's a shadow of the tree, that's a little diagonal. Uh, but most of them try to err on the flat side. That's what's going to give the road a realistic sense of flatness and going into the distance. Okay. Now putting in the trees, 
a very different activity than the cars. The cars require logic, figuring out the perspective, following rules and guidelines. For the trees, it's the other way around. In fact, it's completely the opposite. For the trees, I'm trying to avoid patterns, to avoid uh, things that feel human-made. I want them to look random. I'm looking for those random curves and movements in the tree trunks, uh, in the, the trees' placements, in their thickness. And you have to bring into consideration a lot of things. For example, trees that are closer to us are obviously going to be thicker. And you may notice more of their movement. While the farther trees are going to be slightly flatter and thinner. Okay, And you also want to distance them differently. The closer they are to us, the distance is going to grow larger. And that's a funny thing to think about. Because the farther they are, the more it seems like they're squeezed together. Okay, that's an important thing to remember. The tree on the right, top right corner, I'm just kind of putting in general shapes. Okay, uh, and then there's some foliage down below. There are a couple of light, light street light, street lamps, stuff like that. These are you just kind of pop in there. Uh, it's not as important. Generally speaking, the farther objects are, the more you can get things a little inaccurately, including perspective, including all of that. Um, notice that I really, where I really put a lot of effort was in the cars that are closer to us and some of the trees that are closer to us. What's farther back, you can kind of get in the ballpark and it will still look good. And in fact, my goal here is to simplify and paint in my favorite approach, like Impressionism. Um, and this was a really fun process because it's something that always puts me in my zone, in the in my element. It's a cityscape, uh, which I love. It's cars, which I love. It's very loose painting, which I love. So every once in a while, make sure to paint to your strengths as well. It's important to improve your the things you lack in. But also don't forget that there are things that you may feel more competent in. And there's nothing wrong with doing them and a lot of them. Okay, I want you to enjoy painting ultimately. Now here I am putting the sky and painting around the trees. The why I do this is because I want the trees to be a little warmer. So I'm leaving some gaps for the uh, uh, blue and yellow to not mix for now. OK, they, they will obviously mix. This is watercolor we're talking about. But to some extent, I want to preserve that separation. So I understand that, the, yes, they will kind of blend together. But I am leaving that gap. I don't want to do this yellow wet in wet. I want to do it wet next to it, if that makes sense. Now, the lower we go, notice how dominant the warm colors, the warm hues become. Um, so I'm really cranking up the heat. Uh, adding more yellow. I'm fine for this painting with my yellows mixing with some blues and some reds. I love that organic feel that no color is completely isolated and all of them are tied together by very gentle combinations of both. And that's something that I always enjoy doing. Uh, and you'll notice how I'm cranking up the heat the closer I get to us. In fact, the road as I like it to be uh, is going to contain some red in it. Okay, some warmth. Uh, as for the colors I'm using, it's a combination of French ultramarine, phthalo blue, yellow ochre. Uh, there's going to be a bit of uh, pyrrole red, kind of pyrrole scarlet, and a bit of uh, red ochre. What I'm putting in right now is red ochre. It's a beautiful color. So it's kind of a brown, but it's a very clean, very red brown. Uh, which I find fits really well uh, together with yellow ochre, obviously. What I'm putting now wet and wet is that other pyrrole red. Uh, kind of a warm red. It doesn't really matter which one. You could also go with quinacridone rose. Um, but the, the important part is I'm cranking the heat in the lower sections. Uh, the reason I used some spray is just to wet and dampen this, these areas that I missed in the sky and to kind of let them move a bit. Uh, but it's not that important, honestly. Um, just kind of keeping some things moving if I want to. Now, I am going to do some wet and wet for the trees. Here's the thing. When we get to foliage, things can get a little more complex. What you want to achieve is a nice, clear message. Okay, That's what I'm aiming for. To get that clear message, I'm not going to put a million leaves in there. I'm going to put large areas of green. Now, to establish some softer edges for these large areas of green, I'm starting by putting these green wet and wet. Now, the timing here, I got lucky and it was pretty perfect. So the paint is not going to move around too much. Okay, It's going to stay kind of in its place. 
but we will obviously get, and you can already see this, um, um, soft edges, okay? Uh, especially this tree on the right, I want it to stay soft for a while, so uh, I'm putting it like this, wet and wet, I'll probably inject some yellow in it. Now, one of the questions I received in the recent live stream is, how do I mix interesting greens? Uh, my favorite combination really is French Ultramarine, Yellow Ochre, these very natural colors that you see very often in nature. Uh, yellow Ochre mixes really well with Thalo Blue as well, so if you're using Yellow Ochre, you can kind of get away with almost any blue. And yes, I am mixing my own greens, and yes, I'm using kind of random combinations of both. Uh, sometimes I'll put in red as well to neutralize the green a bit. Um, here it dried, okay, so drying time, perfectly dry now, people always ask, now it's perfectly dry. But just to finish off my point about greens, I am mixing my own, it's a combination of many different colors, okay? Uh, but mostly, of course, yellow and blue, and mostly the, the yellow ochre, uh, maybe some new gamboge, which I like, Indian yellow, together with phthalo blue and French ultramarine mainly. Very natural uh, blues, more on the French ultramarine side. Now here comes what most people will probably consider the hardest wash, included uh, myself included. Here's the thing, and this is where people lose it with foliage. Keep the shapes large. Don't go about painting each and every individual leaf. I know it's tempting, but look at what I'm doing here. I'm putting in that tree trunk. I'm starting small. That's something I always encourage. Start small. Don't open up a huge shape that then you have to worry about all of its edges. Start small, just one tree trunk. Look at how I'm carefully building it up, adding some painting negatively around these, you see these uh, little pieces of shiny green foliage, okay? Now that I'm done with the tree trunk, I'm pleased with it, I'm going to start establishing what's behind it. And I'm not painting every single leaf, I'm indicating a few, and then I'm moving on to painting a large shape. Okay, so, and, and look at this, because I'm using one big shape, I can actually take my time, mix a bit, make sure I get the right value, the right color, leave that gap to the left of this tree trunk, because there is a beautiful gap, sun comes from the left, shadows are cast to the right, the left sides of the tree trunks are warm and, and well lit, you want to capture that. So here I am painting around these beautiful um, plants in the foreground, right behind the cars, you see they're lighter, this green is super light, okay, keep it light, greens are very misleading, you, you may be tempted to paint them green, don't, they're actually super light, like my first wash, I'm not going to go over them anymore, in fact, I'll probably add some uh, opaque white to the highlights later on, but look at the shape, okay, it's just one big shape of a tree, I don't go about rendering each and every leaf. And even though you can see some leaves, and even though you can see some details, for the most part, what am I focusing on? Big shapes. That's where most people lose it. Um, and the fun part is, because we're doing foliage, which is rather fun and freeing, you can kind of, you know, you can't go too wrong if you keep the shapes large. I can mix any color I want. So here I want to get some of that leafy texture. I go with the side of the brush, but then I'll pull it in together with a large distinct shape, okay? And the colors are rather free. I added a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, and a bit of red too. Um, what this does is it keeps the foliage very organic feeling. If you notice, a lot of it is kind of a gray green. It's not really that strong of a green and it's a mistake a lot of people make they go just full on full force with the green but remember the trees here are the background to the cars and the shadows and the road that are closer to us more important of a focal point the trees are supportive they they are they do play an important role but it is a supportive mid-ground role okay uh, so feel free to go a little more muted i will mix it up with some cleaner uh, pure greens, you will see in a moment, but for now I'm keeping things rather muted, okay? <clears throat> and by the way, it could have been maybe a good idea to reverse it, start more bright and pure green on the left and go a little muter on the right, which is farther, but that's fine, I didn't really think about it at that particular moment. Now, I am still very happy with the result I got. Again, big shapes, okay, look at this, the top of this uh, tree, I'm rendering these shapes very large, using uh, a pretty thick brush to get all of these details easily. I'm leaving a bit of a gap to the left of this tree trunk again. And as I get closer to the cars, I really want to make sure I get the shape right. 
um, because the cars, again, are more in the front, more of the subject of the painting, and I want to get their shape in accurately. And I'm fine, by the way, look at me painting together two shapes. The left one has already started drying. That's fine, it's not the end of the world. Because it's foliage, you get some freedom, you get some leeway, um, you can go a little messier. And it's probably time to switch to a smaller brush soon, by the way. Uh, I think I will. Uh, so here I am, adding a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, you, just a combination of a lot of colors for the tree trunks and the trees themselves. And even though my brushwork is a little sloppy, it will actually make sense. Again, I'm keeping the impression simple, okay? Um, here I am go going with a bit of pure yellow, that's a really, really beautiful one. Uh, of course, some green, some blue into that, uh, but for the most part, like two-thirds yellow ochre. Here's a bit of red uh, for the building in the background. I felt a bit of warmth on it, but not yellow. I did want to make a separation between it and the trees, uh, so I'm putting it in. It's fairly light. Uh, I will glaze on top of that later on, if necessary, with some other colors. Uh, I am trying to leave some gaps. Um, for the, the, foli the foliage, the lighter details, but most of these are gonna come in later on with some opaque paint, so I'm fine with that. Near the bottom, it does get a little darker, so ideally I would like to darken it uh, if possible. Uh, at this stage, you will see me probably going and darkening it, but look at this tree on the corner, I love that. I love that most of it is, is has been created wet and wet. You don't need much more than that, and here's the bottom part, a little darker. Um, the edges next, next to the cars, I want to fix those before I move in uh, to the larger area on the right because it's still wet, I want to make sure I get it while it's still wet. Um, and remember, I can add more, later, more uh, details later to the foliage, that's fine, we're not done. We can do that after this wash dries and we will. Uh, but to establish the major shapes, keep it very unified, okay? Don't go around painting every single individual leaf. You just won't, it will never end, really. Now, if you're aiming for photorealism, be my guest, go ahead, paint every individual leaf. Uh, that's fine, that's part of uh, photorealism, but then you have to be really accurate. And uh, some areas still are merged, even in photorealism, so yeah. Uh, now onto the cars, and look at the contrast from the background. I'm using a pure blue. Now, I feel like I got the colors really well in this one, and let me explain why. This pure blue, as, as a beginning to establish this wash, um, is and we're gonna do some wet and wet, obviously, but for now it's perfect, why? I increased the saturation and the cleanliness of the paint, so it's more of a pure blue on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's still a blue, so it still feels suitable for the edge of the painting because look at it we're still working on the left edge of the painting we're not at the focal point we're not in the car in the middle we're to the left so uh, it's a great color to get started with as a basis if you look at the car there's a lot of different colors in it it's not actually a pure blue but for me that pure blue works really well Okay, uh, establishing some shadows for the tires, for the shadow underneath the car, uh, and then at some moment later on, I really realize the body of the car is too light compared to that, and I'll go ahead and darken it with some, you see, pure blue as well, but still darker. Um, and, and look at me building this particular shape, not expanding it, I'm not moving into the next car, I'm finishing everything I want to do here before I move on to the next car. Uh, so that I can do wet and wet while it's still wet. I can take advantage of the fact that I have a lot of control of this wash at this point. And I'm also establishing the shadows that are connected. And these shadows are very important. It's a major part of the focal point here. It's what guides viewers into the scene. Uh, you want to get those to look interesting. Not necessarily accurate. I'm not replicating what I see. Um, I'm kind of putting it where I see fit. Um, and where I think will create interest. How, you do, how do you create interest? A variety of shapes or of sizes. Uh, this is the main key part. Now, moving on to this card, it's way more in the middle. Again, I told you, this is the first card that's closest to us, we can fully see. So for that, I'm using a little bit of a stronger red on the body of the car. I know it's not a red car, it's actually silver. Um, but I do want, or gray, if you will, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> but I am pushing the color temperature a little warmer here to contrast with the blue on the left. And if you know me, you know that I love showing all primary colors. So you will see a hint of yellow, a hint of red, a hint of blue. Whenever one of them is missing, I feel like almost my painting lacks something that it should have. 
Uh, and, and so what am I missing now in the cars? A yellow, and you will get that in the next car. Uh, you will see this soon. We have blue on the left car, we have blue and red on the middle car, and you'll, you will see some yellow in the next car. And yes, there is an abundance of yellow in the foliage as well. Uh, so, so no worries, we got all of our three primaries like I like them to, to be present th all throughout the painting. Um, now, while this is still wet again, uh, I'm, I'm reinforcing some areas that went too light for my taste uh, and connecting them to the shadow. The shadow is a little darker, so I can go a little darker there. Uh, and notice how I added a gap between the car and the road uh, a light gap that's not there. It's not there in the reference photo. I just think it looks good, this kind of a detail. So I kept that. Between the back tire and the bottom of the car, you see this white lighter section. I left that. Um, so onto the next car, some wet and wet. Start establishing the shapes of the uh, the glass and the tail lights, all of those details. You see the tail lights are a little uh, darker. The license plate. Uh, is it's yellow, but it is uh, darker. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much it for that second car. And again, we will come back with uh, some more uh, opaque paint later on, just to just to get or stronger, darker paint to get some more details. But here is our yellow car. Okay, <laughs> quite dark. I'm gonna lighten it up in just a moment. And do you recognize this car? you may find it familiar. This is actually the car I painted in that tutorial of the colorful car uh, that I did last week. So it's the same car. Uh, I just, on the other picture, I zoomed in on it uh, with my camera, actually, with my phone, took the, the picture, same spot, same car. So it's a funny thing to see it in a different uh, rendition. And it could be interesting to compare the final result here as opposed to the, the smaller painting where I focus just on this car. I actually, I think I'll do this video. Um, I should write down this idea, it's actually a good one. Uh, because that way you can see how, oh, I'm gonna write it down, compare cars. Uh, you can see the difference when I approach a reference, when it's the focal point, when it's everything in my painting, as opposed to when it's just a small part in the background where I can simplify it more, I can, um, play around with the details, include fewer details, so it's an interesting comparison. And look at the cars behind that. The cars here don't matter at all. I'm just putting in some very few details, but where I do want to get nice, interesting shapes is in the cast shadows. The cast shadows still play an important role. You see how they pull us into the scene. They lead us into the back there, uh, into the other street. It's a major focal point. It's a major and important part of the scene. Uh, now I'm gonna put in some reds for the sidewalk. Uh, it has this red white mark. That means you cannot park there. Uh, gaps getting uh, a little smaller the farther they go from us. Okay, and you can see this in the in the photo reference as well. Um, adding a couple more shadows there felt like there wasn't enough. Um, so reinforcing that pattern. Uh, this fanning pattern from slightly diagonal to almost horizontal. You remember that. That's what happens when you put things in perspective. Got this line in. Uh, blending some of that back side of the line. It got a little too strong uh, for my taste. Should have started this uh, brush mark from bottom to top and to make it stronger at the bottom and uh, weaker at the top. But you see, you just use your finger to smear it around and that's fine. <coughs> now it's time to reinforce some of the foliage, okay? Um, so this wash isn't dry yet, but it's fine because we're not gonna do anything almost that overlaps it, so it's fine. Uh, especially the foliage that's close to the cars because that's what's gonna lead to the interesting contrast, okay? So I don't really care what color I'm using here, but I do care about getting it darker. And look at how it makes those cars pop. Uh, now while I'm at it, I can start adding some you know details to the foliage itself. You just use this opportunity this part has dried, this part of the painting, obviously. Uh, not obviously, it has dried. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's dry. Uh, but I really love these scenes. You know, foliage scares people, but remember, there's a lot of freedom in that. So yes, it is. it can lead to overwork, it can lead to, you know, uh, putting too much emphasis on it and ending up rendering each and every leaf. Uh, and especially if you come from the oil realm, if you used to do oil paintings, it's a very common theme I see of people really painting each and every shade. But remember, you're doing watercolor now. You can get things to flow together. You don't have to use a small brush and, and put in small details. And by the way, not oil painters paint like that. You know, some oil painters use huge brushes and paint a little more, uh, a little loosely, a little more impressionistically, depending on your style. 
I do see that over rendering though coming from uh, a lot of people who, who uh, are used to oils so just to have that in mind now the cars are still slightly damp um, in some spots but for the most part they're, they're pretty much dry so uh, I can go ahead and start putting in some more details on them um, actually you know what I think they're fully dry now by this time um, so I'm just starting to put in some of the details on the cars um, this is gonna play an important role because look at the cars they're in the foreground they're closest to us they rec almost require more details this is very subjective it's a matter of taste you may decide this is enough detail for you keep it even looser than me uh, but but I like to bring out some details especially for the cars that are closer to us um, but we will put some more details on the farther cars as well but this is where you want to still you want this, these details to support uh, the looseness from the previous wash so you may want to make sure you don't go overboard here keep things flowing again a part of the beauty of watercolor is that contrast of a dry bar brush over a very wet and loose and blended wash okay so the basis for the cars is very loose and and flowy and on top of that you add that layer of solidness uh, by doing the uh, drier brush technique okay uh, and I'm gonna continue and render these smaller details on some of the cars um, here's the car that from that other YouTube tutorial bringing out some darks especially at the front you see a lot of these uh, some of the windshield some of the shadow underneath the tires you know all of these you don't want to go too strong though this feels a little too strong so I may dab some of it or another solution spray some water on it then you see it melt into uh, the, the its surroundings uh, and I'm using this opportunity to put this uh, other part wet and wet uh, these cars are dry just a detail here and there tires really random but but there is some rule to this randomness I am looking at the darker sections and, and that's where I put these okay so it's not like I'm you know winging it fully now uh, it's very easy to think that I'm winging it if I go fast but uh, there is a lot of experience sometimes behind the speed okay um, never paint like fast just for the sake of painting fast there's always purpose to painting fast uh, either you want the wash to not dry on you you want to get some uh, dry brush texture so you have to do fast brush marks but don't paint fast for the sake of painting fast that is something I see sometimes um, with students with people I work with and just from general observation uh, it's, <laughs> there's this tendency to go fast just because it's watercolor no take your time start with smaller shapes establish them slowly um, there will be time and place where you can speed up a bit uh, but for the for starters you know uh, start small start small and humble that's something I, I had to teach myself as well because I didn't do it in the beginning uh, so yeah using this opportunity to put in some more details uh, before I'm starting to add some um, uh, opaque white paints for the highlights I do want to add make the most out of my darks um, really thinking in terms of composition is it lacking in something do I need to add in some more smaller individual shapes am I missing some horizontal shapes do I have too many vertical shapes you know so all of these things um, some shadows going on top of that sidewalk that's another thing that you see so why not include it that sidewalk is not excluded from shadows um, so that's important uh, making sure the sidewalk on the left is clear enough this is kind of just me observing all of the small details and so on now I'm gonna add a few smaller details to the cars at the back uh, just felt like a few um, diagonal and almost um, almost horizontal lines are, are due uh, just to bring out some small details here and there um, smudging some of these to make them not too prominent but we're really really close to finishing this it's gonna be just these small details um, some of these got lost uh, earlier it was probably just a little bit wet uh, so I'm reinforcing them basically adding some antennas uh, to the cars <laughs> you can actually see some of them uh, and with that we can move on probably to the opaque paint see I have some opaque paint on my brush I'm gonna strengthen that highlight on that tree on the left uh, which is where it's most prominent uh, and I'm gonna make my way from left to right just adding in these uh, where they're necessary um, a lot of highlights on that foliage between the trees and the cars so that's where I'll spend a lot of time just getting those uh, but I am starting with the tree trunks because that's where it's most obvious look at these beautiful um, curvy tree trunks especially um, 
that's where I want to add most of the highlights. Some highlights on top of the cars obviously are necessary. Um, there are some details in the background that require some highlights, but uh, for the most part, I think the most important parts are going to be the trees. Um, I need to recharge with more paint, so here we go. Uh, and the foliage, where I'm working right now. This is extremely important. Uh, this is where you really want to make sure to make them pop because look at how well lit they are. They're very well lit. Uh, I may have gone even too dark with the darkest stage, the, the darkest parts of this foliage. Should have kept it maybe a lighter green uh, to just provide it with more of a green feeling, but that's fine. Um, again, my point here was not working on the colors it's <laughs> or improving that skill. Uh, my, my goal here was actually to... Uh, get the impression I like. So it's a very selfish painting in a way. And you see, I got a good result because I played to my strengths. Okay. Now I'm fixing this shape of the car, the top roof. I lost some of that highlight. So I'm retrieving that and keeping this sharp point to the from left to right, signing it. Uh, and now we can remove the tape. Uh, so let's do that. Um, used a bit of a higher quality for this section so that I can zoom in and zoom out if I want to crop this for Instagram or for some other uh, platform. So here we go. Very nice result. I'm very pleased with it. The, the most important thing here is that I was able to communicate the idea, the road, the sun, the cars, the, these beautiful uh, shadows uh, with some trees in the background. I really hope you enjoy this one. Now let's wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the process. I've had a lot of fun with this one. And it was great to do something that that immediately puts me in my uh, in the zone, uh, something I'm, I'm familiar with because I have done a lot of studies on things that are kind of my weaknesses and weak points. It's nice once in a while to go back to your strength um, and play into that and really produce something solid that you just feel good with the process. You didn't have to to uh, to exert yourself too much, but it was just a healthy amount of exertion and, and thought and planning and so on. Uh, so in any case, I want to thank you once again. Don't forget to check out, as always, link in the description box below to my frustration-free watercolor course. The, the Christmas sale is over, but we will probably have another sale in the future. So just letting you know that. And also, please, 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 like the video, leave a comment down below. It really helps me reach more people. And I read the comments and it gives me more ideas for videos. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. I will talk to you again real soon.